Georgia has the highest foreclosure rate in the country. One in every 300 homes is facing foreclosure, double the national average. That hurts our property values, destabilizes neighborhoods, and leaves our schools and governments slashing services and staff. But our investigation finds many of those foreclosures didn't have to happen. They were actually done illegally. Courts know about the problem, so does law enforcement. But no one has been held criminally responsible. Tonight, we ask tough questions about what some call the largest fraud ever perpetrated on Americans. When I look at this, it's organized, organized, organized crime. Patrick Powell never expected simply applying for a loan modification on his Forsyth County home would turn him into a victim of massive foreclosure fraud. It makes normal, like the mafia's organized crime, look like fifth grade math. Three, four. The musician and sound designer says a bank illegally tried to foreclose on his house. It happened after his servicer told him not to pay his mortgage while it worked out an adjustment. Then they lost his 60-page modification application. Not once, not twice. How many times? Uh, I would say total probably about six. When I called in to find out where the negotiator was and how come I hadn't heard from them, they were like, what, what modification, what package are you talking about? We don't have any paperwork on you. Down on their luck homeowners tell similar stories at this convention center event in Atlanta this spring. Thousands line up, some camp out, hoping counselors with the nonprofit Neighborhood Assistance Corporation of America can do what they couldn't do alone. I've been working with um, Bank of America probably for over a year trying to get my mortgage refinanced. Ultimately, some will get lower payments, others will lose their homes, which will be auctioned off on courthouse steps. That was about to happen to Powell when he saw a 60 Minutes report in 2011 that blew the lid off the industry's dirty secret. None of the major banks were willing to sit down with us and talk to us about this. It revealed banks used phony documents to push people out of their homes. It turns out when Wall Street bundled mortgages into trusts and sold them to investors, they lost important documents related to the loans. So when banks needed those missing papers to foreclose on homes, attorneys and foreclosure firms just made them up. Forging signatures of bank vice presidents and notaries on documents called assignment of mortgage, which transfers ownership. 60 Minutes exposed one prolific robo-signer named Linda Green. But on thousands of other mortgages, the style of Green's signature changed a lot. I saw that, and I was like, Linda Green. I'm like, let me, let me go see. And I pulled out my assignment, and I was like, oh my god, it's Linda Green. So you thought you had an open and shut case at that point? I did, yeah. This is the uh, transcript of the judge. According to the hearing transcript, the judge chided Powell as he tried to explain the complex fraud. She cuts me off. Let me tell you how I'm kind of from the country. I understand plain English a lot better than I understand flowery language. And why do you think he cut you off? He doesn't understand? Uh, I think there was an agenda of knowing going in what was going to happen. He just wanted to get it done with, you know. Uh, in Georgia, they've largely ignored the problem and rubber stamped anything that the banks want. Paula Rush, an auditor and expert in the field, spoke to us over Skype from her home in Florida. She says banks are using the phony documents to orchestrate a much more sinister fraud. She says the servicer never intended to modify Powell's mortgage and just dragged him along. The reason? Rush says investors who bought the trust that included Powell's mortgage also bought insurance that pays out if the loans default. Well, what I see over and over again in the monthly investor reports is that the loan trust that have a lot of insurances on them, there's no loan modifications being done. In the loan trust that have no insurances left in them, whether they're exhausted or they weren't there to begin with, they're doing lots of loan modifications. They're, they're lying to the homeowner that they even stand a chance at getting a loan modification. It's a racket. It all boils down to money. And BAT runs Operation Restoration, a grassroots group which helps homeowners fight illegal foreclosure. People have been blamed for not making their payments but they are 
in a vicious cycle. She says Georgia judges and court clerks who accept the forged papers only perpetuate the problem. If there was anything proactive on their part, they'd be able to stop a lot of this. Salem, Massachusetts, the harbor town known for its colonial era witch hunts, is now getting a reputation for hunting out foreclosure fraud. The Register of Deeds here in Salem is among the first in the nation to expose the magnitude of the problem. He's now challenging the nation's biggest banks and calling for their executives to be criminally investigated. Talk to me about what, what you have here. This is approximately 38,000 documents that have been recorded in this registry that contain fraudulent robo-signed signatures. This is the evidence. John O'Brien's registry holds deeds dating back to land deals with the Indians in the 1600s. He says those are more accurate than many of the documents banks send today. An outside auditor revealed only 16% of the assignments in his registry are legitimate. Totally fraudulent. The signatures are fraudulent and the information in some of the documents are fraudulent. And they knew this, the banks knew this. And the attorneys that process these documents know it. He found many different robo-signers apparently penned the same name. Look at all the different versions of Linda Green and Brian Bly. I can't look people in the eye any longer and tell them who really owns their mortgage because their mortgage has been sold so many times. So who owns your mortgage? I wish I know the answer. One of those homeowners is Senka Huskich. She says Bank of America gave her the runaround in modifying her loan, then tried to foreclose using a phony assignment. She fought it and hasn't made a payment on her Peabody, Massachusetts home in nearly two years. Why do you think the bank hasn't come after you and foreclosed on your property? I think they're not coming after me because they know that I am ready to sue them for wrongful foreclosure. You see, only the mortgage owner can foreclose. And since the bank made such a mess of the paperwork and the mortgage has been resold so many times, no one has been able to prove who owns her note. People are going to say maybe you're part of the problem by not paying your mortgage and whatever happens, you deserve. Okay, but I will ask all of these who will say that, like, if I show to you that your bank uh, is fraudulently taking your payments because they don't own your mortgage, would you still continue to pay? For me, you are a fool if you do that. Three, four. O'Brien says his office no longer accepts assignments completed by known robo-signers. His staff returns them to the bank with an affidavit asking bank officials to swear to their authenticity. He says no bank has ever done so. You are the David going after the Goliath. Well, perhaps I am, but what, I'm, what I am is somebody who's elected doing his job, and I suspect that the taxpayers in your, in, in your state want your registers of deeds to do the same thing. It's very simple. But we found Georgia officials aren't as willing to crack down on the fraud. And Mr. O'Brien's a smart man. <laughs> so, uh, Kathleen Robinson is Fulton County's clerk of Superior Court, Georgia's version of the Register of Deeds. She says it's not her responsibility to make sure the documents are authentic. Her job is just to file them. How big of a problem would it be for your staff to start looking at the signatures and comparing them to lists of known robo-signers? It would be a major problem. We, we, are, we have been cut, our budget has been cut, we're working on limited staff. In February, the nation's five largest banks reached a $25 billion settlement with the feds and 49 states. The banks include Wells Fargo, Bank of America, GMAC Ally Bank, Citi, and Chase. But it appears banks are still filing fraudulent assignments. This came in. Not only was it signed by Brian Bly as vice president of City Financial Mortgage Company. The Register of Deeds in Massachusetts showed us one he received this summer. I truly, truly believe this. They know exactly what they did. They sit there and say, we're too big to fail. Well, they're not too big to go to jail. You're placing everything on the criminal side. The civil side has recourse. Georgia Attorney General Sam Owens signed the major settlement that netted Georgia $100 million. 
He also pushed through a new law that gives him and county district attorneys power to criminally prosecute foreclosure fraud. We fully expect that this new legislation, which just became effective in July, will have that same effect, that we'll see a significant reduction, we meaning both the district attorneys and us, because as those individuals understand they can be prosecuted, uh, they're going to follow the law. Olin says the law only allows him to prosecute crimes that happened after July 1st of this year. Some argue he could do more. If, if we get an investigation that shows fraud June 1, the, the law wasn't in effect and we can't prosecute. But it's always been illegal to submit false documents. True. But isn't that what the banks did? Look, it's, it's much more complicated than that. When you're dealing with the foreclosure process, most of the time the documents weren't being changed in the state. Patrick Powell's assignment was signed in Georgia, along with untold thousands of others, likely inside this office in Alpharetta. I would love to see them go to jail. He's now suing American Mortgage Services and Deutsche Bank, if for nothing else he says to hold them accountable, since police and prosecutors haven't. Let's figure this out in court. I don't want to hear your, your, your servicer, your negotiator. I want um, a court of law to tell me that this is right, and then I'll do whatever they ask me to do.